24. Commendation of Charity But now I will turn to my most loving sheep who are securely placed in my heart, the seed of chastity. Virginity was made by me, for my son was born of a virgin. And therefore virginity is the most beautiful fruit of all the fruits of the valleys, and the greatest of all the persons in the palace of the unfailing king, for it was not subject to the precept of the law, since it brought my only begotten into the world. Therefore, listen, all those who wish to follow my son, in the innocence of free chastity or in the solitude of mourning widowhood, virginity unspotted from the beginning is nobler than widowhood oppressed under the yoke of a husband, even though widowhood, after the grief of the loss of a husband, would imitate virginity. For my son bore many pains in his body and underwent the death of the cross, therefore you also, in his love, will suffer much anguish when you conquer in yourselves what was sown in the lust of sin by the taste of the fruit. But though you will endure in your seed flowing rivulets from the conflagration of lust, since you cannot be so chaste as to prevent human weakness from appearing in you secretly, you should in that labor imitate the passion of my son and resist yourselves, that is, extinguish within yourselves the burning flame of lust and other things of this world, casting out anger, pride, wantonness and other vices of that son and attaining this victory by a great struggle. These battles are to me full of great beauty and much fruit, brighter than the sun and sweeter than the love of spices, for when you trample underfoot the burning lust within you, you imitate my only begotten in his pains. And when you persevere in this, you will attain much glory for it in the celestial kingdom. O oh, sweetest flowers! My angels marvel at your struggle, for you escape from death, so as not to be polluted by the poisonous mud of the world, you have a carnal body, but you tread it underfoot, and so you will be glorious in their company since you will appear unpolluted in their likeness. Therefore rejoice that you thus persevere, for I am with you when you receive me faithfully and with joy in your hearts receive my voice, as I show in a secret vision of my beloved John, saying. 25. John on this subject. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, if any shall hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, and he with me, Apocalypse 3.10. That is to say, O oh, you who faithfully love me, your Savior, look and see how, wishing to aid you, I wait at the tabernacle of your heart, seeing what you have in the self-knowledge of your conscience, and with the breath of your memory I knock at your spirit, that its goodwill may open and grant admission. And if then the faithful heart, which fears me, hears my knock, I join myself to him, embracing him and taking with him the unfailing food, since he offers me that sweet taste, himself, in his good works, therefore he too shall have that food of life in me, because he loves what brings life to those who desire justice. 26. After Adam was expelled, God closed paradise in. But, as you see, after Adam and Eve were expelled from paradise, a luminous splendor surrounded that region, since when they went forth from the place of delight because of their transgression, the power of the divine majesty took away every stain of contagion from the place and fortified it with his glory, so that from then on it would be touched by no encroachment, which also showed that the transgression which had taken place there would one day be abolished by his clemency and mercy. 27. Creation opposed man because he rebelled against God. And so all the elements of the world, which before had existed in great calm, were turned to the greatest agitation and displayed horrible terrors, because when man chose disobedience, rebelling against God and forsaking tranquility for disquiet, that creation, which had been created for the service of humanity, turned against humans in great and various ways so that man, having lowered himself, might be held in check by it. What does this mean? That man showed himself a rebel against God in the place of delights, and therefore that creation, which had been subjected to him in service, now opposed itself to him. 28. On the Delightfulness of Paradise But paradise is the place of delight, which blooms with the freshness of flowers and grass and the charms of spices, full of fine odors and dowered with the joy of blessed souls, giving invigorating moisture to the dry ground, it supplies strong force to the earth, as the soul gives strength to the body for paradise is not darkened by shadow or the perdition of sinners. 29. Why God made man such that he could sin. Therefore listen and understand me, you who say in your hearts, what are these things and why? Oh, why are you so foolish in your hearts, 
you who have been made in the image and likeness of God. How can such great glory and honor, which is given to you, exist without testing, as if it were an empty case of nothing? Gold must be tested in the fire, and precious stones, to smooth them, must be polished, and all things of this kind must be diligently scrutinized. Hence, O oh foolish humans, how can that which was made in the image and likeness of God exist without testing? For man must be examined more than any other creature, and therefore he must be tested through every other creature. How? Spirit is to be tested by spirit, flesh by flesh, earth by water, fire by cold, fight by resistance, good by evil, beauty by deformity, poverty by riches, sweetness by bitterness, health by sickness, long by short, hard by soft, height by depth, light by darkness, life by death, paradise by punishments, the heavenly kingdom by Gehenna, earthly things by earthly things and heavenly things by heavenly things. Hence man is tested by every creature, in paradise, on earth and in hell, and then he is placed in heaven. You see clearly only a few things among many that are hidden from your eyes. So why do you deride what is right, plain and just, and good among all good? Things in the sight of God? Why do you think these things unjust? God is just, but the human race is unjust in transgressing God's precepts when it claims to be wiser than God. 30. Man should not examine the highest things since he cannot the lowest ones. Now tell me, O oh human, what do you think you were when you were not yet in soul and body? Truly you do not know how you were created. But now, O oh human, you wish to investigate heaven and earth, and to judge of their justice in God's disposition, and to know the highest things though you are not able to examine the lowest, for you do not know how you live in the body, or how you may be divested of the body. He who created you in the first human foresaw all these things, but that same most gentle father sent his only begotten to die for the people, to deliver humanity from the power of the devil. 31. Man now shines brighter in heaven than before. And thus man, having been delivered, shines in God, and God in man, man, having community in God, has in heaven more radiant brightness than he had before. This would not have been so if the Son of God had not put on flesh, for if man had remained in paradise, the Son of God would not have suffered on the cross. But when man was deceived by the wily serpent, God was touched by true mercy and ordained that his only begotten would become incarnate in the most pure virgin. And thus after man's ruin many shining virtues were lifted up in heaven, like humility, the queen of virtues, which flowered in the virgin birth, and other virtues, which lead God's elect to the heavenly places. For when a field with great labor is cultivated, it brings forth much fruit, and the same is shown in the human race, for after humanity's ruin many virtues arose to raise it up again. But you, O oh humans, oppressed by the heaviness of the flesh, do not see that great glory God's full justice has prepared for you, without stain or unworthiness, so that no one can throw it down. For before the structure of the world was made, God in true justice had foreseen all these things. Therefore, O oh human, consider this comparison. 32. Man's condition symbolized by a garden, a sheep and a pearl. The master who seeks to set out a garden without being wearied first chooses a suitable site, and then, deciding on a place for each planting, reflects on the fruit of good trees and the utility, taste, fragrance and high esteem of various spices. And so this master, if he is a great philosopher and expert contriver, lays out each of the plantings where he sees that it will be most useful, and then he thinks of enclosing it with great walls, so that none of his enemies can destroy his planting. Then he appoints his experts, who know how to water the garden and who collect its fruit and make from it many fragrant things. Therefore consider well, O oh human, if that master foresaw that his garden, bringing forth no fruit or any kind of use, was to be destroyed, why would so great a philosopher and contriver have made, planted, watered and fortified it so eagerly and with so much labor? Hear, therefore, and understand. God, who is the Son of Justice, made his splendor. Rise over the filth that is man's wickedness, and that splendor shone with great brightness, as that filth stank exceedingly. The sun gleamed forth in its brightness, and the filth putrefied in its foulness and therefore the sun was embraced by those beholding it with much greater love than if the filth had not been their opposite it. 
But as foul as the filth is compared to the sun, so evil is man's wickedness compared to God's justice. Hence justice, being beautiful, must be loved, and iniquity, being foul, must be rejected. Into this foulness fell a sheep belonging to the master who had planted this garden. But this sheep was separated from its master by its own consent, not by his negligence, afterward the master sought it again with great zeal and justice. Therefore the choir of angels shone with great honor, for the angels saw a human in heaven. What does this mean? When the innocent lamb was suspended on the cross, the elements trembled, because the most noble son of the virgin was slain in the body by the hands of murderers, by his death the lost sheep was brought back to the pastures of life. 4. The ancient persecutor saw that because of the blood of, he innocent lamb, which the lamb had poured out in remission of the sins of humanity, he must lose that sheep, and only then first recognized who that lamb was, Previously he had not been able to understand how the celestial bread, without a man's semen and without any desire for sin, had become incarnate of the Virgin by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. For that persecutor, when first he was created, raised himself up in the haughtiness of pride, throwing himself into death and expelling man from, he glory of paradise, but God did not will to resist him by his power, but conquered him by humility through his Son. And because Lucifer derided God's justice, by God's just judgment, he was unable to know the incarnation of God's only begotten. For by this hidden decision the lost sheep was brought back to life. Therefore, O rebellious humans, why are you so hard-hearted? God did not will to forsake humanity, but sent his Son for its salvation, thus God crushed the head of pride in the ancient serpent. For when man was snatched from death, hell opened its gates, and Satan cried, Alas, alas, who will help me? And the devil's whole band was torn with great agitation, marveling that there was a power so great they and their prince could not resist it, since they saw the souls of the faithful being taken away from them. Thus man was lifted up above the heavens because through he son of God God appeared in man and man in God. Likewise, that master who lost the sheep but brought it so gloriously back to life had, like hat sheep, a precious pearl that slipped from him and fell into the mud. But he, not allowing it to lie in the dirt, mercifully drew it forth and purified it of he filth in which it had lain, as gold is purified in the furnace, and restored it to its former honor with even greater glory. For God created man, but the latter at the devil's instigation fell into death, from which the Son of God saved him by his blood and brought him gloriously to the glory of heaven. And how? By humility and charity. 33 commendation of humility and charity above all other virtues. For humility caused the Son of God to be born of the Virgin, in whom was found humility, not eager embraces or beauty of flesh or earthly riches or gold ornaments or earthly honors. But the Son of God lay in a manger, because his mother was a poor maiden. Humility always groans, weeps and destroys all offenses, for this is its work. So let anyone who wishes to conquer the devil arm himself with humility, since Lucifer fervently flees it and hides in its presence like a snake in a hole, for wherever it finds him, it quickly snaps him like a fragile thread. And Charity took the only begotten of God, who was in the bosom of the Father in heaven, and placed him in the womb of a mother on earth, for it does not spurn sinners or publicans but seeks to save all. Therefore it often brings forth a fountain of tears from the eyes of the faithful, thus softening hardness of heart. In this, humility and charity are brighter than the other virtues, since humility and charity are like a soul and body that possess stronger powers than the other powers of soul and bodily members. How? Humility is like the soul and charity like the body, and they cannot be separated from each other but work together, just as soul and body cannot be disjoined but work together as long as a person lives in the body. And as the various members of the body are subject, according to their powers, to the soul and to the body, so also the other virtues cooperate, according to their justice, with humility and charity. And therefore, O humans, for the glory of God and for your salvation, pursue humility and charity, armed with them, you shall not fear the devil's snares but shall have everlasting life. Therefore whoever has knowledge in the Holy Spirit and wings of faith, let this one not ignore my admonition but taste it, embrace it and receive it in his soul.